Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of the Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho but he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets 
also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see them, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. morning. I don't know if you know, but uh, we've had a busy weekend here (laughs) at Grace, and especially for me and my family. Um, And I want to take this time to say thank you to all of you that participated helped in any way with my ordination yesterday, especially the dean and the sub-dean, the staff, the choir. Y'all were phenomenal. The hospitality team with the reception afterwards was amazing, um, and it was really touching for me and for my family. So thank you all so much for that blessing yesterday. So I'll do something a little different today, and don't worry, this isn't going to be the whole sermon, but I uh, wanted to tell you about the beginning of this whole process. So one Sunday morning, I was singing in the choir, and Canon Caleb Lee came up to me, and he tugged on his collar, and he said, I think one of these would look good on you. (laughs) And I said... You're a psycho. (laughs) I really did say that. (laughs) And he said, okay, I'm just saying, I I think that it would look really good on you. Fine. Then a week later, Canon Callie came over and said something similar. And I said, are you and Caleb working together on this? And she she was surprised. She said, Caleb didn't say anything to me. I was like, oh, okay, you're pulling my leg. But thank you, I appreciate it, you're both crazy. And then about, I don't know, eight or nine months later, Dean Michael, on one of my last Sundays here as I was gonna help my sister, came up to me and he said, there's a place I want you to go in Virginia. Virginia, okay. Well, that's where I was moving, but I thought it has to be with music, there's a cathedral there. He said, no, there's a, there's a seminary there. I want you to go look at it. And so I had been thinking about this for eight or nine months, and I was like, no, Michael, you're crazy too. Did you know that Caleb and Callie had said something to me? And he said, got these big eyes, you know, his big eyes. And he was like, oh, 
well, what does that mean? <laughs> now, if they had planned that together, you know, leave it to Michael, that's possible. I'm not saying it isn't, <laughs> but it could have also been the Holy Spirit, and that's what I've taken with me from here. But I'll tell you about those seven or eight months in between when Caleb came to talk to me and when Michael came to talk to me. My first thought was, how could I? I could never. Who am I? How would anyone or why would anyone want to listen to my voice? I started out as a singer. Then I was a sailor in San Diego in the Navy. Then I was a server in restaurants supporting my habit of singing. And then finally I was looking at medicine and working at an ophthalmology office thinking about medicine. And I said, nobody wants to hear those stories. I have a past, right? I'm not saying I was a partier, but I'm not saying I wasn't a partier. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing that I knew. I was flawed. And I didn't think in my mind that someone that was so flawed with such a varied past should be up here speaking. And then I had a meeting with Michael. And Michael said, you know, your trajectory, this is basically perfect. <laughs> He's like, you're saying no, no, no. Look at all the prophets. That's exactly what they said. No, no, no. He was like, one of them evened up, even ended up in the belly of a whale because they didn't want to do it. He said, so I think you need to think a little bit harder about this. Now, today's readings on this Transfiguration Sunday, at first glance, you might think the Old Testament reading is about Elijah. And maybe the gospel is about Jesus, and they are. But those aren't the people that really stick out to me. The first one that sticks out is Elisha. How annoying was he, right? <laughs> no, I am going to stay with you. Elijah said it three different times. Now, if I had somebody, you know, in the hierarchy ahead of me, and they said it three times, I'd be like, all right, I got it this time. I'm staying behind. But Elisha, no, no. I'm not leaving your side. And then, when Elijah said, all right, I'm about to leave, what do you want? He said, oh, I want a double helping of your spirit. And my first thought was, goodness, that's a little bold, right? Like, leave some for the rest of us. <laughs> and so for me, I looked at Elisha and I thought, he's pretty flawed. He's not perfect. But Elisha did bless him with that double spirit. And then we look at the gospel and we see Peter. God loved Peter. You know, it's a, the transfiguration is, amazing, is an amazing moment, but for the life of me, if I was there and I was seeing Jesus and Elijah and Moses, my first question would not be, let's build some houses. I mean, that's just not my first question. <laughs> my first question might be, Moses, 40 years in the desert. Could you have shortened that up a little bit? What happened? Or maybe, Elijah, how was that trip up? Was that cool in that whirlwind with the fire and the chariot and everything? Tell me about that. No, 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 not Peter. Peter was so terrified, he was like, uh... I can build some tents. <laughs> and Lord knows he wanted to stay there, like we all would have, I would imagine. But again, Peter was flawed. Even when Jesus was going to get crucified, Peter denied him three times. That transfiguration, that seeing, hearing God's voice saying, this is my son, listen to him. Even then, Peter didn't fully grasp it. And so he was flawed. And for whatever reason, those, those are the people that I latch onto in these stories. 
Because that's what I thought. Well, and I know for a fact, is true. Lord, I'm flawed. As are we all. But then you're reminded of grace. You're reminded of mercy. That good news that we always talk about with Jesus coming and saying, you know those things that you did that live in the back of your mind that you can't believe you did and you still feel guilty for or you want to hide or you never want anyone to know? Yep, those things. I still love you. You're still welcome here. Let me set a table for you. And in this table, I'm going to fill you, your flawed, heartbroken body, with my love and light. Even though I know you don't deserve it, I don't deserve it, no one deserves it. But that's not what mattered. It didn't matter when Elijah was looking at Elisha, saying, why are you asking me for more spirit? It didn't matter to Jesus when Peter was like, let me build some houses. It doesn't matter when we are here together in this beautiful community, knowing that we are flawed. And we can feel that pain probably no matter where we are. And then Jesus says, nope, it's for you. It's for all of you. And then Paul comes in in the epistle and says, that light, take it into the darkness. That darkness that you experience every time you walk out these doors, maybe in jobs, just walking on the street, in the grocery store. That light, that's where you're taking it to. You're not saving it for yourself because you're afraid you're going to run out. Guess what? You get to refill every Sunday. <laughs> because our job, what we have been called to do, you and me alike, is to share that light. And so today, I would love for you to pray and remember when you come up to take the body and blood of Christ that his light is shining through you and your eyes and mine too. Amen.
Let us offer prayers to Almighty God through his beloved Son, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church throughout the whole world, for Ruth, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for All Saints Episcopal Church on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan, for all who minister in Christ's name, and for all the holy people of God. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all the nations and peoples of the earth, and for their leaders. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who serve at home or overseas, in the military, mission, or outreach work, for Sam, Dennis, Henry, Brian, Keen, Maxim, Louisa, Edward, Justin, Andrew, Jake, Maxwell, Drew, Legree, Kurt, Thomas, Henry, Griffin, Will, Boost, Trevor, Matthew, Christian, and Jack. God in your mercy. For Miminger Elementary, Boost Academy, and for all schools and places of learning. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, especially the ordination of Eric Bash to the diaconate and the baptisms of Holy, I mean, Holly Ann Fisher, Louise Hollingsworth Lindy, and Warren Harwood Lindy IV. God, in your mercy. For all who are needy, desolate, forgotten, suffering, and lonely, remembering the sick. For David, Karen, Joan, Michael, Tripp, Rob, Rhett, Chris, Angela, Janice, Clifford, Eileen, Randy, Martha Ann, Martha, Rocky, Jimmy, Donald, and Lynn. God, in your mercy. For the dead and for those who mourn, remembering Morris Cave and Richard Holt Hogan, Jr., God in your mercy. Transforming God, lead us in all our efforts as we seek the renewal of this holy place. By the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our life, empower our work, and enrich our capacity to serve. As we have known your desire to save, may we also know your power to transform. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, peace. Please be seated. Welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. Whether present in the cathedral or watching online, it was quite a celebration yesterday. You might even say it was a, it was a wonderful bash. Um, what do we say? Uh, the sub-dean is somewhere. We just have a little presentation. It's ticking. Come on over here. Uh, just a couple things to remind you from whence you've come. 
And of course, the greatest news yesterday was not only the ordination, but that Eric will be serving as the curate at St. John's, John's Island. I think you know the rector. I think her name is Callie. So he will be back. And uh, this will be his cathedral. And we will be seeing you from time to time. So thank you. Wonderful sermon. Uh, and uh, all we can say is excited about the future. And uh, hope you will enjoy those as, as ways of remembering your home base. Thank you, Eric Bash. Great. Thank you. Hope to see everyone after church in Hanahan Hall as we have a chance to greet Eric uh, and uh, continue that celebration uh, as we have fellowship together. You will see uh, in your calendar about all, the, all the events coming in uh, the next little while. Of course, in the bulletin, you'll see that we have Shrove Tuesday. Who doesn't love a pancake? <laughs> I've never met a camp pancake I did not love. Uh, as long as he had lots of time with his friend Syrup. Uh, we go back a long way. And then, of course, the next day, Ash Wednesday, opportunities at 7 a.m., noon, and 5.30. And you know the deal. I know it's Valentine's Day. I know we ought to celebrate Valentine's Day. You have permission to celebrate Valentine's Day if you've been to church on Ash Wednesday. <laughs> I'll be looking. So I hope to see you on Wednesday. And then you'll see in your bulletin all the other activities. Uh, the theme we've chosen this year is, is kind of echoed in Eric's sermon. It's about darkness and light. Not that we have a religion that says um, we live in the darkness in hope of light, but rather that we live in a tradition that says even in the darkness we can find the light. So I, I love the introduction that Eric gave, I'm sure unintentionally. Uh, but that will be our theme, and we have a couple of book studies that will celebrate that fact if you want to find a way to get more into the season. But again, a great celebration for this last Sunday after Epiphany, and I hope to uh, see you next week as we move into the Lenten season together. Walk in faith, in hope, and in love. Amen.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son, for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time. Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
stand. In the name of God, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go forth in the name of Christ. 